Hello, my dear students. Very good morning to you all. Hope you are all doing good. In the previous class, we have discussed about the external treatment methods. In that, we have seen ion exchange process or demineralization process. Today, we are going to see about one more external treatment process that is zeolite or permitted process. So, in this process also, we are going to treat the water outside the boiler that is treating the water before feeding the water into the boiler yes we should know what is zeolite they are actually beautiful compounds existing in nature and they are simply looking like clay like compounds so naturally occurring zeolites are hydrated aluminosilicate minerals and they are actually non porous so we can even synthesize the zeolite in the laboratories by mixing or by heating the sodium silicate, aluminum sulfate and sodium aluminate together to form the crystalline and porous material with high ion exchange capacity. So natural zeolites are possessing low ion exchanging capacity but synthetic zeolites are possessing high ion exchange capacity. So, the synthetic zeolites are more porous compared to the natural zeolites. Here you can see list of zeolites available in nature and their typical formulas. In the bottom you are seeing the sodium zeolite, what we are going to use in our process. So, the first picture is the zeolite extracted from nature and the second one is the synthetically prepared zeolite. Actually, the zeolite are permitted means boiling stones so these words are greek derived and it actually means boiling stones now we are going to see about our own sodium zeolite which we are going to use in the water softening process so here you can see an animated image which is rotating with a cage like structure that is porous structure so this cages or porous portions of the zeolite are going to exchange the cations present in water and it gives sodium plus to the water. Since we have taken sodium zeolite, the exchange is cations of water and sodium plus of zeolite. So actually the zeolite is Na2O, Al2O3, XSiO2, YH2O. The X may vary from 2 to 10 and the Y may vary from 2 to 6. So, this is actually sodium oxide aluminosilicate hydrated or you can say hydrated aluminosilicate with sodium oxide. So, to write in the equations, it is difficult to write the entire formula. So, we are going to represent the sodium zeolite as NaEZ or NaEZ or Na2EZ or Na2EZ. So, it is up to our convenience. So, we can use any of the terms mentioned there. Now we are going to discuss about the process that is an experimental process taking place while using zeolites. In the two beakers we are going to add water containing impurities or hardness. Please note that in the first beaker there is no zeolite. In the second beaker there is a zeolite which is actually going to exchange the cations and makes the water soft so you can wait and see the water slowly becomes transparent from turbid it becomes transparent so it means that the zeolite has taken the cations of the impurities and makes the water soft or pure in the second image you can see a molecule is passing through the cages or porous structures of zeolite so this is just to represent or just to show you how the cages or porous portions of the zeolites looks like. Okay. Now we are going to see how the process is taking place or how we are carrying out the water softening using zeolite. The hard water is passed through zeolite bed followed by sand and gravels. So while passing through the sand and gravel and through zeolite, the water is getting softened that is the cations of the 
water or the cations present in the water is getting removed and it will become soft. So, the soft water is collected. Now, we are going to see about the reactions taking place during the zeolite process. That is, when impure or hard water is passing through zeolite bed, the following reactions takes place. So, you can consider any salt and you can represent the sodium zeolite as either Na2EZ or Na2EZ. So, the zeolite takes up the cation present in water that is the calcium and it will become calcium zeolite plus Na2SO4. So, which means that the zeolite is now having calcium and the water is now having only sodium sulphate, no calcium. Similarly, you can consider what happens when magnesium chloride present in water is reacting with sodium zeolite. So, the sodium exchanges magnesium and becomes magnesium zeolite plus NaCl two times. Similarly, you can write the same equation for bicarbonate salts also. So, calcium bicarbonate plus sodium zeolite. So, what happens is it becomes calcium zeolite plus sodium bicarbonate. So, two times. So, here you can see now the zeolite contains calcium, magnesium or whatever may be the cations present in the water and the water contains sodium salts. So, this is why we have uh, said that the water treated in zeolite process becomes saline that is rich in sodium salt. So, this is how zeolite exchanges cations of water and it gives sodium ions to the water. All of us have learned that in ion exchange process, the ion exchange resins are getting exhausted at a particular time after continuous treatment process. So, we have regenerated the exhausted ion exchange resin in ion exchange process. Similarly, in zeolite process also, so after continuous water softening process, the zeolite loses its ability to exchange ions, which means that the zeolite is occupied by the cations of water and it will become exhausted. So we have to regenerate the exhausted zeolite by using sodium chloride solution so that the sodium chloride solution makes the zeolite active again by exchanging the cations present in the exhausted zeolite and giving sodium ions to the zeolite which means that the so zeolite has become active again by taking up the sodium from the NaCl solution. So, this is how regeneration of zeolite takes place. Now, we are going to see about the regeneration of exhausted zeolite. So, as we have discussed here earlier, the zeolite loses its ability and become exhausted after continuous water softening process. The zeolite became calcium zeolite, magnesium zeolite like that after continuous treatment of water. So, we have to add sodium chloride in order to regenerate the zeolite to its actual or original form. So, now the zeolite becomes sodium zeolite. So, this is the actual form and the cation will become water. That is the cation which is present in the zeolite become salt and it is removed so, to NaCl. Similarly, we are adding NaCl and again the zeolite is regenerated. Okay. So, this is how zeolite is regenerated and it is used again to treat the water. Now, we are going to discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of zeolite process. So, actually it is an efficient process in which it removes the hardness of water up to 2 ppm. It is very cheap and cost effective and it does not occupy much space like ion exchange uh, or demineralization plant. And it is actually compact, simple and easy to operate. And during this process, no sludge is formed. Hence, it is called a clean process. 
So there are few disadvantages also in zeolite process. The zeolite bed may be clogged or it may be occupied by turbidity. Hence, we cannot use turbid water and highly acidic water can damage the zeolite bed. So water containing huge acids or high acidity cannot be treated in this process. And brackish water that is salt water cannot be treated since it contains sodium plus ions. And the major disadvantages is continuous process produces sodium salts like sodium bicarbonate, sodium carbonate, sodium sulfate, sodium chloride, etc. So all these salts makes the water highly saline or salt water. And if we use this salt water in boiler, it may cause caustic embrittlement and boiler corrosion. So these are the disadvantages of zeolites. Thank you so much for the patient listening. Hope you have enjoyed the video. So if you have any doubt, please feel free to ask me. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.